Ladies and gentlemen, welcome from Astor Place here in New York City, Manhattan. We are kindly hosted by IBM for our AI in your business springboard. And today I have a very special guest for you, Ambi. Welcome. Thank you. Ambi, can you introduce yourself to our audience, please? Yeah, um, I'm Ambi Ganesan. I'm an associate partner in uh, IBM Consulting's AI practice. Um, I lead our uh, generative AI offering for the Americas. And what that means is um, I help our clients in the Americas explore, enable, and derive value from generative AI and other AI offerings. Thank you, and thank you for your time. Ambi, one of the biggest questions we got from all members yesterday is, this is 2024. Last year was very interesting with the outbreak of generative AI, <laughs> so to say. In your point of view, where are we going in 2024 with AI? That's a great question. So, 2023, like you said, was a lot of um, exploration and experimentation uh, with uh, generative AI becoming very viral. In 2024, I see broadly three themes happening. Um, the first is uh, value realization, right? So enterprises all played with, did POCs, MVPs. Now it's a laser focus on identifying which use cases are going to derive the maximal value. It doesn't have to be the fanciest use case, it doesn't have to be the fanciest technology, but derive the maximal value, right? Um, so that's a broad theme that I'm seeing emerging. The second one is around enablement of scale, right? Again, every team within an enterprise is excited about generative AI and making use of its potential. Um, and there is a lot of redundancy in terms of how teams will go and develop these solutions. And so I'm broadly seeing our clients, IT teams, coming up with a, a horizontal platform that will have these you know, um, modular components that you can reuse to go and um, reduce the inefficiencies in development. So, that's for deriving maximal scale, right? And then the third piece that I, that I think is going to emerge is generative AI is, you know, the developments in generative AI haven't ended in 2023. There are a lot of new capabilities emerging and going to emerge in 2024, whether it's multimodal models, um, text to video, text to images, and you know, advances in uh, RAG and chat with documents or mitigating hallucinations more effectively. There is a lot of new capabilities that are going to emerge. And I think we'll continue to see a lot of that um, experimentation with additional new capabilities, right? So broadly, I think those are the three themes, value, scale enablement, and then continuing to unlock new capabilities. Oh, oh thanks, uh, great overview. I mean, everybody's exploring currently these yeah. new tools, and uh, I, myself, I'm losing my own system. I see companies that are using sometimes different providers, different language models, experimenting a lot. Everybody says they have found a new solution here and there and other words. How do you see this? How can we drive more meaning? You know, is this the right way to do? What do you recommend to companies who are experimenting currently? touches upon some of the themes that we were talking about earlier, right? Um, lots of experiments in 2023 and now going to scale. So going from that to a structured scale approach, um, I see enterprises starting to put systems and processes in place. And this takes multiple shapes and forms, right? Um, you need to have some sort of a structured mechanism to make sure that there is a funnel to capture all these ideas and pipe it through and make sure there is validation and assess in terms of, okay, is this something that can be, um, is this truly generative AI or not? Or if this is just you know, traditional AI, and if it's you know, truly generative AI, um, do you need to uh, really build out a new MVP? Do you really, can you make use of something that's already built in place? Um, so typically these decision trees and the accompanying processes and systems are emerging. And like I mentioned, you know, every vertical team within um, a company 
is experimenting with generative AI, whether it's the sales function or whether it's the marketing or HR, everyone is trying to experiment and come up with these solutions. So how do you make sure that you have an open architecture platform that will have components that any team, whether it's in HR or sales, can still use these abstracted components to build these solutions, right? So that's how I see structure emerging from these experiments that have been happening in 2023. Ah, perfect, thank you so much. So you shared your vision about 2024 in general, then we looked into the structure. But the key question, of course, is how will enterprise drive the adoption of AI? Ah. Uh, Where do you see, you know, the the enterprise world really moving into it and squeezing value out of this new technology? Yeah, so I think adoption um, largely starts internally, right? Um, there is excitement typically in, um, you know, developers and IT teams. How do you ensure that there is widespread adoption within a company, right? And broadly, I think two themes. It's education and exposure, right? Um, I think there is a lot more education needed across the um, you know, wider employee base within a company to say, okay, here is what is AI, here is what it can realistically do, here is what it can't do. So there is you know, level setting, expectation, and being honest with what AI can do, but you know, making it more um, accessible to everyone, right? And when you talk about accessibility, that is that exposure to AI, right? Um, making sure that you know the every employee gets to use and play with and see the impact of AI on a personal level. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, at IBM and a lot of clients, I'm seeing um, there are you know internal search engines, and those search engines are now transforming into answer engines using generative AI, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking up all the vast repository of documents that every company has. Um, typically, we would have used our internal search engines to go trawl through those, find you know, uh, documents and so on. Now, I'm seeing a lot of those across multiple companies uh, starting to transform those into answer engines and give you the right information directly. And every user gets to use it, right? Every employee gets to use it. I think that's a very good way to start to get a feel for how generative AI is transforming. I mean, yesterday we had um, all our members here in the room and there was great interaction between your team from IBM and our members, manufacturers and retailers. What would be your key takeaway hmm. from our yesterday's session at the Springboard? So uh, it was a very exciting session, uh, lots of interest about generative AI. And one of the things that I found interesting was that um, you know, a lot of um, self-assessed um, you know, measurement in the AI journey was categorized as being in a beginner stage almost, right? Um, and I found that interesting, a little bit of a dichotomy there. Um, the, the CPG and retail industry led from the forefront when it came to leveraging machine learning and data and analytics um, for the last several years, right? Whether it was on uh, hyper-localized, um, you know, store performance or uh, trade promotion optimization, pricing optimization, right? Very gung-ho about making use of data and building the analytics and machine learning solutions on top of it to go and drive that. And I think there is an immense potential to continue that journey and continue to be leaders in going from those machine learning, traditional machine learning solutions to generative AI now. Um, and I see a lot of excitement and interest and promise in how you know, our partners in the CPG and retail industry space are going to actually do that. Great outlook. Thank you so much for your time, Mambi. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to our second half today here at Astor Place. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, this was MV from IBM. You'll find his contact details below. And we hope to see you in one of the other interviews. Goodbye. Thank you.